Solomon, Thank please. you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, just to my colleague's statement, it's a little bit rich coming from one of my colleagues on this committee who wants to gut the military and its readiness. So, but that's a whole other issue. I want to get back to my line of questioning from this morning. And I will tell you again, gentlemen, I've never seen so much anger, at least from my constituents, who've witnessed a fiasco, a humiliation, a president who is consistently telling falsehoods to the American people and the issue of there's no accountability. And um, you gentlemen have spent decades serving your country honorably in combat. I have the utmost respect for your service, your fidelity to America. And importantly, you've dedicated your lives to an institution that has a culture of strict accountability and responsibility up and down the ranks. I mentioned a few examples this morning, the collisions of the USS McCain and Fitzgerald. Everybody up and down the ranks, including the three-star admiral, was relieved. The recent very tragic Marine AAV accident, everybody up and down the ranks, including the commanding general of the 1st Marine Division, was relieved. Uh, if you're a Marine or Army second lieutenant training your platoon on patrol and one of your soldiers loses his NVGs or his rifle, that lieutenant is going to get relieved. But on this issue, one of the biggest national security fiascos in a generation, no one is accountable. And the American people are livid because they saw it, they see it, they know. It's a debacle. General Milley, this morning you called the Afghan retrograde a logistical success, but, quote, a strategic failure. I appreciate your honest assessment. I believe the President of the United States is solely responsible for this. Mr. Secretary, do you know if anyone, the National Security Advisor, the Secretary of State, or Undersecretary for Policy of DOD has offered their resignation to take responsibility for this fiasco? I do not. Okay. I do not, but I don't believe they have. Okay, thank you. Given the military culture of accountability that all of you gentlemen come from, and again, I respect that more than almost anybody. Have any of you offered your resignation to the president at any time since his decision to withdraw? And General Milley, I understand your earlier answer to this question, that senior military advisors and officers can't resign every time they disagree with the president. I actually agree with that. But after the president's decision, when the American people see such a strategic failure, as you called it, that's undermining our national security, they expect accountability, and there has been none. So have any of you accepted that accountability or responsibility? No. I'm accountable for my actions. And no, I'm, I'm just talking about a resignation. I have not submitted my letter of resignation. Mr. Secretary? No. General? I have not submitted a letter of resignation. Mr. Secretary, I want to know what will it take for someone, anyone, in the Biden administration to take responsibility or accountability for this national security fiasco? Anyone? Senator, from a DOD perspective, again, you heard me say that we'll continue to review our actions and, uh, and we won't hesitate to, uh, to be critical of ourselves. Uh, and if there's, uh, if, if there's someone that should be held accountable for an action, then we'll certainly do that. I want to switch topics here very quickly. General Milley, do you think if the Chinese Communist Party decided to invade Taiwan, would their military leadership call and give you a heads up? I think there'd be a period of increased tension, indicators and warnings, and I think there'd be an exchange of various communications at all levels. Uh, Department you really of State. think the Chinese, and I think you really I think would, that you really think the Chinese Communist Party head of their of the PLA would call and say, "Hey, General, FYI, we're going to get ready to invade Taiwan." I just thought I'd give you a heads up. Do you think you? I know. You I honestly, would, think that I know. I'd call him and ask him. No, I'm I would asking call him the other ask question him outright. Do you think he'd give you a heads up? I think on the that, invasion um, of Taiwan. I, I think it, I think an invasion of Taiwan would be a fairly obvious thing to pick up on. And no, no I didn't. But that's not what I asked. Let me, let me ask a let me ask a related question. Sure. I think the answer to that is no. I think 
If the head of the PLA called you and said, hey, we're getting ready to invade Taiwan and Xi Jinping found out about it, he'd be shot. But let me ask a related question. You said you were, quote, certain that President Trump did not intend on attacking China. That's what you just said. That's correct. Yet you're quoted in the Woodward book as telling the, cho- the top Chinese communist military commander, quote, if we're going to attack, I'm going to call you ahead of time. Is that true, General Milley? Well, let me tell you what I actually said. Uh, well, that's we, not true. I hope that's Let me not. tell you what I actually said, Senator. Uh, what I said, if there's going to be a war, uh, if there's going to be an attack, there's going to be a lot of calls and tension ahead of time. But what you you're going to get caught. You're, you're going to get caught. Your testimony was that you were Senator, certain all... President Trump would not attack. That's your testimony this morning. That is true. That okay, is absolutely true. Okay, then why true. would you? And I was, I was communicating to my Chinese counterpart on instructions, by the way, to de-escalate the situation. And I told him that we are not going to attack. President Trump has no intent to attack. And I told him that repeatedly. And I told him if there was going to be an attack, there'll be plenty of communications going back and forth. Your intel system's gonna pick it up. I said, I'll probably call you. Everybody will be calling you. We're not going to attack you. Just settle down. It's not going to happen. And I did it twice, in October and January. I think Thank you, if you're giving a heads up to the Chinese Communist Party... I didn't give them a heads up we're going to attack because we weren't going to attack. If we're going telling to attack, we were not going I'm going to, to attack, call you ahead of time. I was being faithful Sullivan. to the president of the United States' intent. Time I was, I was being faithful to his intent, Senator. Thank you very much. Uh, Senator Peter.